you, and this is a, a hot topic that uh, a lot of people uh, talk about across the country, and that is what exactly are your rights as an individual when you are approached by a police officer? Let's say, for instance, you get pulled over in a vehicle. Uh, they have, you know, uh, really no reason to pull you over. Then maybe your tail light is out, or you have uh, your license plate light is out. What is your basic rights when uh, being approached by a police officer to protect yourself um, from uh, from something that could go horribly wrong? Well, when you say horribly wrong, are you, are you talking about a police officer attacking you or arresting you unlawfully, or what? Yeah, exactly. All of the above. When you operate a motor vehicle, that is a privilege. You must be licensed. You must have the vehicle insured. You must have it registered. Those rights are kind of like understood when a police officer pulls you over. You have to identify yourself. You have to present a driver's license. You have to present insurance and registration. Now, I understand you're talking to a veteran police officer. I used to teach these classes. I would hold up when I was, uh, you know, a cop in, in California. There was one that said criminal law and one that said traffic law. Two books, separate. If I was to ask you which book you would make the most arrests out of, what would, book would you say? That is a uh, good question there. Uh, pretend as if uh, uh, I wasn't somebody who was knowledgeable up on this. What uh, what would uh, go on from there? Okay. In reality, you would make more arrests, and which would eventually lead to criminal charges out of the traffic law. Okay. Okay. Because that is your probable cause. That is your probable cause to stop any vehicle on the roadway. Now, you're talking to an old traffic cop, too. The traffic cop for a couple of years before I got run over by a drunk driver and left for dead laying in the street. So, when you say it's stopped by an officer for committing some type of uh, traffic violation, Understand that officer may not be just looking for traffic violations. He could be looking for a child molester that just committed his crime two hours ago or two minutes ago or whatever. But he's using the traffic laws to stop you legally. And from there on, in questioning, that's where your rights as a citizen come in. Like I told you before, you're supposed to identify yourself, provide registration and insurance information, and then if it proceeds from there into an inquiry about where you've been, how long have you been there, who else is in your car? What are you up to? Did you just leave this other area? Anything like that. That's when things are heating up. You don't have to answer those questions. Those have nothing to do with traffic bodies. And you have a right to remain silent. If that officer feels that it needs to go further than that, then let him prove it. Now, sometimes people believe that if you remain silent, that is a sign of guilt. Well, it isn't a sign of guilt in a court of law. As for guilt to a police officer, he does not determine guilt. He determines whether or not you could be a suspect. If you answer uh, questions that wouldn't necessarily
Okay, now, Detective Martinez, let me ask you this question here, because this actually happened to me, uh, I want to say, maybe... I knew it. I just knew it. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe six, seven months ago, uh, I was walking along the sidewalk, and it was very early in the morning. I was on my way uh, to work, and it was uh, right before dawn, so it was probably about 6, 15, 6, 30 in the morning. And uh, I'm walking on the left-hand side of the uh, sidewalk. I cross the street... uh, to uh, walk on the other side, to on the right-hand side of the sidewalk. Now, there's no traffic lights. There's no nothing. We're just, this is a neighborhood. You know, everybody does it. There's no law breaking going on there. So I cross the street and I get on the right-hand side. And uh, a gentleman was approaching me, um, uh, coming towards me, just a regular guy, nothing doing about him. Uh, he passes me and goes into the apartment complex as uh, as I was walking past. Don't know him. Never saw him before in my life. Never had a conversation with him whatsoever. So I continue going on, and at the time that uh, me and the other uh, uh, guy passed by each other, uh, Metro had drove, uh, driven down the street. And so I already had the, just the shudder come over me. like you know, I already felt it in my gut that something wasn't right. Sure you enough. You know what that is? You what, know what that feeling is? What's that? What we call it? What's that? We call it black, black and white fever. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, understandable. I can understand that. But uh, – so yeah, so as I walk past, the cop passes by, uh, passes by, and uh, I just get this feeling like, oh crap, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, I don't have anything on me illegally, I, I, I'm totally in the right. The cop comes up, passes by me, turns around, uh, makes a U-turn, throws on his lights, and stops right in front of me, gets out of his car, gun on his hip, all that, I understand that. He uh, gets out of his car and he starts yelling, he's like, hey, where are you going, what are you doing, get over here, like he's asking me. Ten questions at once without me having to answer not one, okay? He tells me to step in front of the uh, uh, the vehicle. He tells me to put my hands on top of the car. Now, I am not resisting. I am not being an ass. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I pl- plainly ask him, uh, what is this all about? And he goes, I'll ask the questions. Never mind that. And I, and I thought to myself, okay, here we go. So he immediately gets behind me. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Did he touch you down? Yeah, that's what I was getting at right now. He, uh, okay, and you're asking him what he's, what he's stopping you for while, you're, while he's patting you down? Exactly. Okay, continue. So as he gets behind me, uh, my hands are up on the car, my legs are spread. He gets behind me and starts going through my pockets. And I ask him again, sir, what is this all about? And he's silent, doesn't say a word. Then he pulls out my wallet, pulls out my keys, pulls out everything, throws it on the hood of his car... Uh, starts going through my wallet, and he goes, uh, do you live nearby? And I said, yes, I do, sir. I live right around the corner there. Well, where are you headed to? Well, I'm headed to catch my ride to go to work. Well, uh, what time do you start work? I start at 8 in the morning. And here it is about 6.30 in the morning. He was like, okay, well, you still got uh, some time, so uh, sit tight. I'm thinking to myself, what is going on? He's not asking me what I am being detained for as I'm asking him what is the nature of this stop. He goes in the uh, passenger side, uh, reads uh, the uh, dispatch. Let me stop you here. Do you know what he was investigating or no. if any crime had occurred? No idea whatsoever at all. He wouldn't answer any of my questions. Okay. Continue. So he uh, goes in the passenger side, gets on the little uh, uh, thing there for dispatch, starts reading my name and uh, driver's license number and all this and that. And then uh, before I knew it, he uh, takes my wallet, throws it at me, and says, okay, now you're free to go. And... I had to hurry up and get my stuff off the front of his car before he backed away or else everything that he took out of my pockets would have went all over the uh, street. You know, all these people are outside looking and I feel, you know, like I'm this small, you know, like I'm, 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 a, I'm a midget because I was violated. At the same time, I was pissed off, but I didn't want to say anything to escalate the, uh, the uh, situation. And I didn't want to reach into my pocket to pull out my cell phone to get video of this, as I as I do now, because I didn't want him to think I was reaching for something to give him an excuse to do something. So my question is to you, Detective, in a situation like that, did I do anything wrong as far as asking the questions, or could I have done more, or what, in a situation like that, what is your right when it comes to a situation such as that? Okay, now i got to share the uh, same kind of incident with you that you just shared with me, okay? Okay. I, I am a male Mexican adult that back in, uh, when I was 24, I was a cop in Hermosa Beach. I didn't have a mustache then, but I, I have one now. And I drove a little 1965 Ford Rancher, a red one, okay? 
Okay. I'm, I'm minding my own business, driving up the Pacific Coast Highway, entering Manhattan Beach. I am pulled over by three LAPD cars, patrol cars, that work out of the Harbor Division. Okay. I could hear the shotguns racked in, the shells racked in the, in the chambers, and the orders for me to exit the vehicle and go out on the street. Okay? Okay. Now, I must have said that I was a cop and I'm armed about 50 times. It still didn't matter. Okay? I rolled out on the street. I had a streak of oil and grease all the way up my stomach to my face. I had a shotgun put in the back of my neck, and I was handcuffed. After a minute or so, they retrieved my 45 caliber M1911 A1 from my waistband and my ID. After they determined that I was not the person they were looking for that just committed the robbery, a male Mexican driving a red pickup truck. The apologies came out, and off they went. Now, I was a pretty young pop at the time, but even then I realized they were doing something else other than just harassing me. Okay? So, of course I forgave them immediately because I put myself in their position Something else was going on. They didn't explain it to me until later I found out that it was a robbery. They didn't explain it to me at the time. All they said, well, we're really sorry, we got the wrong guy. Have a nice day. That was it. No explanation. Because I knew in the business there is no time for explanations. You do what you have to do, you move on. Now, what you're indicating to me is that he did this, what, just out of boredom? Or that he is because he could? Until you investigate it a little further. I can't really comment that you did anything wrong, he did anything wrong, but questioning a police officer for patting you down, checking you out, asking you a couple of questions, and and just leaving you high and dry is 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 not standard procedure unless something else was going on. Now, I personally used to patrol the downtown area. I did that for about six years in a patrol car. I used to use certain tricks to draw out people that, uh, especially working at night, draw out people like burglars and and rapists and, and everything else from the shadows in between houses and whatnot. What I would do is I would just light up, turn on all my lights and drive by, and basically I was driving in my rear view mirror, looking to see who was going to come out to look at me. Once they did that, I would just immediately hang a new turn and then interview them. This one particular time, this guy came, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, he came from between houses after I did that. I pulled him over, and it was like a gut feeling that there was something wrong here. His looks, he was in a green army deep jacket, blue pants, uh, tennis shoes, frizzy hair, beard, chin beard, but he was too clean. There was something wrong here. And he had gloves on. Got the fucking gloves. I drew my handgun and had him prone the hood of my car. I called for backup. Backup arrived. I went over to search him and I found a cocked and locked 45 caliber M1911 A1 in his waistband. I found an ice pick. I found wire. I found duct tape and a mask, including and also the gloves. I asked him what's going on here, what is he doing, and he refused to answer. So I proceeded to arrest him for probably for carrying a concealed weapon and for uh, possession of burglary tool. I thought it was a pretty good spot. The fact is, everybody 
charged him. The next thing you know, three days later, I get a denial slip from the power of me and the detective bureau that uh, reviewed my case. I went up to the detective bureau, and after a while, uh, they admitted to me that I had stopped a government agent and that uh, all charges were dropped and life was good. Okay. You never know who or what you are going to encounter. Now, after every after all the dust has settled with your case, I would have inquired on why that stop would have happened. You could very easily, after you got the work done, whatever, you could have called, you could have found out what the story was on that, and nine times out of ten, they would have told you. They would have told you what was going on. Okay? Okay. So, uh, I know how you feel. I, I know the, the feeling that you have. You are an innocent person at the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay? And understand how this works. I've been in three shootouts. Three separate shootouts. I killed one guy, wounded one guy, and totally missed the third guy. Now, I had no idea I was going to walk into that kind of situation. It was a robbery kidnapping situation on Halloween. Fortunately, I walked away from it. There's another incident where this guy went into Bob's big boy in Hermosa Beach with a rifle, a note pinned to his shirt with a picture of what he would look like. It was this suicide note and a picture of him before he felt that the police were going to kill him. That's what his note said. He had me. I arrived. The guy had me. And obviously, he wasn't that familiar with the weapon that he was carrying. And he had the safety on Okay. I didn't kill him. I took him into custody. I took him to the Laughing Academy over there in Norwalk. Okay. Permanently insane. So, you never know until you walk in the, in the shoes of a policeman. You have no idea of what you are going to walk into. Maybe that's the attraction. And maybe that's why I've, I've, I've loved it so much. Because it's unpredictable. So you have to put yourself, and I mean try to put yourself, into that policeman's shoes. He has no idea who he's dealing with, and if he is not, let's say, not like Barney Fife or like uh, Colombo, he's going to more than likely be a little overbearing if he is working in crime and he's looking for a suspect. He's going to be overbearing and he's going to do it as safely as he can do it. That's why I asked you if he if he patted you down. Okay? And while he's patting you down, you're asking him questions about why he's doing this, why is he doing this to you, and that you are an innocent person and you're trying to convince him of this while he's patting you down. My suggestion to you, if this happens again, Go with the flow. Don't question it. Agree to being patted down. Agree to have your wallet taken out of your pocket. And just agree, just go with the flow, because it's eventually all going to come out anyway. Now, if you're abused, that's a whole different ballgame. If you're injured, if you're, if you're physically abused, absolutely. Then you have a right not to be abused. I hope I, I gave you some examples and, and kind of cleared this up for you. Yeah, absolutely.